Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Israel International Off-Season Competition. Checking in, Team Mark 3316 Debug. You got to check out this robot, by the way. Uh, love this arm design of the intake and shoot, but a full cantilever arm will be showing as well, too. Uh, some cool modifications of Mark IV Swerve. Of course, we'll be talking about the climber and some code as well. Help me speak more about this robot. By the way, I have a Nav, a Mint, and Segev. And this robot here won the Excellence in Engineering Award and the Creativity Award. You're going to see why. Let's learn more about the scene coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash FIRST to register your team. Let's start off talking about on your drive. You've done a, a couple of the modifications uh, that customized for your robot on the Mark IV. Talk to me more about uh, what's been happening with that. So our drivetrain is um, comp uh, composed of uh, four modules, SDS modules, Mark IVs. Uh, each one is protected with these shields that we had to produce after our, fir our first district uh, championship, which was um, we had this accident when a robot came across us and just yanked off a whole motor. So we had to compose those ones. Um, except for those, we have uh, these 3D printed um, protectors um, for like, all sorts of debris on the fields that protect the electronics and things like that from grease and things like that. Um, and that's it in terms of uh, the drivetrain and its modifications um, from the normal ones. And how, uh, you know, you're using the Mark IV source, how have those been working out for you? Been very happy so far? Uh, yeah, they're very uh, reliable and like heavy duty. Uh, we have no problem with them and like uh, a joy to uh, repair and things like that. Shout out to SDS on that as well. Let's keep moving on to your robot. We're going to talk about, I think, one of the big show pieces is the, uh, the arm that you have here, the intake and everything that's going into it with your cargo journey. So talk to me more about uh, what made you want to go this type of route and then we'll break down what it is as well. Uh, the main concept uh, behind this concept is we wanted to minimize the amount of mechanisms we want to have on the robot so we can maximize the amount of iterations we can do uh, to each mechanism. So we decided to combine the intake and the shooting mechanism of our, our robot and uh, that lets us not have an index uh, between it. So uh, this is our intake. Uh, we have here compliant wheels and Colson wheels and uh, we can intake cargo We'll show it on the... When we intake cargo, there are two slots for the cargo to go and a polycarbonate splitter between them. So each cargo goes to one side of it. Here's another cargo. And then we have our arm that can lift up once we intake two cargo. And the cargo has place to, to fall back and that lets our intake now become a flywheel for a shooter. Uh, so it can spin to the and get to the correct RPM. And once we do, we have servos in the back of each cargo that can push up the cargo and then uh, it, it lets the cargo touch the wheels and shoot it up into the upper hub. We have two servos and they push uh, gradually the cargo so it can touch the wheels and fly up into the upper hub. And our strategy is the, to shoot from right against the fender. So when you're looking at this, we saw that arm come up and it seemed very stable, uh, your robot in there. How did you figure out like to get the right center of gravity so the robot wasn't going to tip over or anything like that? Um, well, we uh, at the beginning of the season, we, had, uh, we made simulations of, of uh, how uh, we wanted our arm robot to be and uh, using that we calculated the center of mass and uh, that helped us determine um, where we wanted to put uh, our uh, where we wanted our dim what we wanted our dim dimensions to be and uh, besides that to make it more stable we also have a lot of code involved in, in this one in this arm so the first thing that we do we have, uh, we have uh, a, a piece of our control that uh, um, negates gravity. So basically, if the arm is at this angle, the motor needs to um, 
needs to uh, put a, the most amount of force to keep it upright, um, as opposed to in this angle, where it doesn't need to put any uh, force at all. So we uh, take that into account, and that allows us to uh, much more easily manage the arm. Um, to manage the arm, we use uh, we have a, a position control with feed forward uh, for velocity, and we also um, to make it move more smoothly, we uh, we have uh, um, a trapezoid profile um, that lets us uh, that makes sure that when we get back down and uh, and go back up. We always will be at velocity zero when we reach this point to not damage any part of the robot. And we also, uh, as a backup, we have these switches that get pressed and uh, they are hard stops for the robot that stop the uh, arm from moving. That's a great explanation. I'd love to hear more about how that works. And, you know, we've seen that on the field. It's worked so well. So congratulations on a, on a great arm and a great design for that. It's so cool to hear. Let's talk about your climber uh, on your robot as well. So you guys uh, have been doing a, a great job with that. Uh, talk to me about some of the strategy. And I'd love to hear about, from a packaging standpoint, you know, you got the climbers on the outside, the big arm in the middle. How did the climber fit into your robot design? So one of the requirements for our climbing mechanism was its simplicity, easy to repair and um, fast action. We opted not to climb for the third and fourth uh, rung. However, we, we can climb in up to one, one second, even less. So that was pretty important to us. Our climbing air is designed with 3D printed parts. Uh, 3D printed parts that are um, similar to something that you could find like uh, components of the shelves. But these are designed um, to have mechanical breakpoints. Uh, as we uh, chose um, in our, careful. Um, in our practice, we saw that this extrusion can sometimes bend under pressure. So we opted to have um, pieces here that are less sturdy, so that if something would break, it would be the 3D printed uh, piece and not the extrusion. Uh, that way, it's much easier to replace. Um, we have sub-assemblies of each part already um, assembled. And each part you can see, um, it's a constant support spring, bearings, and the 3D printed parts, which we call butterflies. Um, as the name suggests, they look a bit like butterflies. Um, and that allows us to climb. The code um, limits the soft closes uh, when the robot climbs to this height so that it won't fracture on the piece itself because this piece is a bit higher when it's fully retracted. And the com complete structure is pretty small, which was, that's the reason we chose a three-part climber instead of the two. So it's easier to transport, lighter weight, and easier to maneuver around the field and keeping the low center of mass uh, closer to the ground so that when the arm goes up, nothing would um, tip over or things like that. Um, th these arms are our fourth or fifth iteration. Uh, we begin uh, with uh, uh, arms made out of metals and butterflies made out of all t uh, sorts of tough materials. But as I said before, um, when the arm itself is uh, fully extended, it's pretty fragile. So we opted to do the um, the engineering stress points so that when something does break, it would be easier to repair and uh, much quicker. One last thing I want to ask, I noticed on the back there you have another version of your uh, your arm. It's a, it's a replica. How long does it take you to actually do a quick change for that and get that, you know, should this break that you replace this out, how long does that take? And uh, talk to you just more about having a, a duplicate as well. Okay. Uh this mechanism had a lot of iterations, uh, especially to increase the robustness of it. Because it is an intake that goes outside of a robot, it can really get hit by other robots. We didn't have, suffer any damage in the, in the past competitions, but if we do, we can completely replace this whole mechanism with the, the replica in under 10 minutes in the pit. Well, Debug, thank you so much for taking time to tell us about your robot and your team. Congratulations on a great year this year. Uh, of course, looking forward to your success, hopefully, at this event, but really looking forward to future years as well. Thanks so much. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. SolidWorks can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SolidWorks.com first to register your team.
At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.